You know, mama, what about my leg? You worrying about my underwear. What about my leg? <laughs> oh, give our drama ministry a big hand. I enjoyed that. I am so excited about this word. I want you to join me and, and, and let's get into this. I, I think you're going to get a lot of questions answered tonight. Father, we thank you for this and other opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And I pray, Lord, you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. If you have your Bibles, join me again in the book of Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And beginning at verse 17, we've been talking about what is faith. And last couple of weeks ago, we began to deal with um, faith's corresponding actions. And I asked you last week, uh, you think we ought to do it some more? And, and yeah, and, and, I, and I, I talked to my wife about it. She said, you need to deal with the area of medicine and how people deal with sickness and the area of prayer and all those kind of things. And so I'm going to have a little uh, review and then we're going to pick up with some other, uh, some more information we need to know because the, the biggest problem that Christian people make where faith life is concerned is that they don't know how to choose the right actions. And so we're really trying to believe God, but then when we stand on the word, we don't quite know what to do as far as a corresponding action is concerned. The Bible makes it clear that the, uh, in Habakkuk chapter 2, 4, the just shall live by what? Faith. Romans chapter 1, 17 says the just shall live by what? Faith. Galatians chapter 3, I believe verse 11 says the just shall live how? Faith. And then uh, Hebrews 10, 38 says the just shall live how? By faith. And so we know that as Christian people that we are to live the life of faith. And uh, in order to do that, we've got to understand what faith is and, and how to operate in it. Now, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. And let's read verse 17 out loud together. Ready? Read. So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith by hearing and hearing by the word. Faith by hearing and hearing by the word. So ultimately, he says that faith is a result of the word. Faith grows out of the word of God, just like corn grows out of corn seed. You do not have uh, or will not have corn if you don't get corn seed, and you will not have faith if you don't get faith seed. The Bible calls the word of God on your lap incorruptible seed. It's incorruptible because it'll always produce and it will never fail. So you don't have a big book of rules on your lap. You have a bag of seed. And you've got to understand that without any word, you can't have faith. Your potential for faith is limited or enhanced by the word of God. Most people think, well, I believe. Well, the devil's believed and trembled. Faith is more than believing. And so faith grows out of the word like corn grows out of corn seed. So if you want faith for healing, you're going to have to go get the word of God on healing. If you want faith for deliverance, you have to get the word of God on deliverance. If you want faith for prosperity, you got to get the word for prosperity. So understand no word, no faith. Little word, little faith, much word, much faith. And it all starts with the word of God. Please understand me. Please hear me clearly. If you are unwilling to go get word seed, then please understand you will not get faith. Faith does not, just not going to show up because you say you believe it. But faith in the kingdom grows out of the word of God, which means you have to get the word if you expect to have faith. Now, what happens and why did God give us the word? Well, the word of God has been given to us so that we'll know how to believe, how to think and how to confess. If you have the word of God, then you're going to have right thinking. If you have right thinking, you're going to have right believing. And if you have right believing, you're going to have right confession. Now, what happens when you're when you're thinking's right? Your believing's right and your confession's right. I'll tell you what happens. You win. You win, praise God. 
when you <laughs> when your thinking's right, when your thinking lines up with the word and your believing lines up with the word and your confession lines up with the word, you will win. But now if your thinking doesn't line up with the word and your believing doesn't line up with the word and your confession doesn't line up with the word, you're not going to win. Now imagine a man or forget about a man. Imagine your life. You don't even have to imagine. Remember in your life before the word of God governed your thinking. You remember that? You were confused. Before the word of God governed your thinking, you, you were, you know, your, 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 your mindset was being, was based on who you were around and who you listened to and what you watched and music you heard. And so you allowed literally the world to teach how to think. You went to public school so they could prepare you for the world. Okay. And so your way of thinking was, was that way. And so if you think a certain way, you're going to believe the same way you think. And if you believe the way you think, then you're going to confess the way you believe and the way you think. And so we have to understand that the word is key in order for us to have victory in our lives. We also must understand this, that once we get the word of God, We've got to keep it before our eyes. Proverbs 4 says, uh, my son, attend to my word. Let it not depart from before your eyes. In other words, here's what, where a lot of Christians miss it, where the faith walk is concerned. You can't get into the word on Sunday and then, you know, leave it in the trunk all week long and then pick it up the next Sunday or Saturday. It won't work like that. If you want the word to work, you got to be committed to farm that seed, which means there's got to be daily contact, daily watering and and, and you're going to have to spend time with it. You can tell when the word is before your eyes because it'll be coming out of your mouth. When you believe in God for healing, you'll, you'll be saying, I'm healed. You'll be saying, I'm all right. You'll be saying because the word is before your eyes. But when the word is no longer before your eyes and you're no longer thinking it, you're not listening to it, then all we got to do is listen to you speak because you will give evidence that the word is no longer before your eyes and you'll be talking death and you'll be talking doubt and you'll be talking all those things because the word is not before your eyes. A bad attitude can be corrected just by making sure you get the word before your eyes and keep it before your eyes, keep it on your mouth, keep it going through your ears. So that's got to happen. As Christian people, we've got to recognize the importance of not letting the word depart from before our eyes. When you're working on healing and you're working on deliverance, it's not you're trying to be deep. You need to tell your friends, I'm not trying to be deep, but I'm working on something, you know? And I ain't got time to be playing around when I'm working on something. I ain't got time to be going and look at stuff and listen to stuff when I'm working on something. Don't invite me to no lounge or no club. I'm working on something. I'm trying to get my life together and you working on something else. And I ain't working on that. I done already worked on that and it worked on me. And I don't want to, I don't want <laughs> I don't want to have anything to do with that anymore. Are you listening to me? I need to preach a sermon on reveling because a lot of Christian folks act like they don't know. You don't need to be in no club, party hard and loosey booty. And I know I'm kind of outdated with the dances and stuff, but you, you don't revel. Oh, the church done got quiet. How you going to be praising the Lord saying hallelujah, you know, on, on Saturday from 6 to 830 and then you leave here? Where you going? I'm going to the club. Jesus ain't in the club. You don't need to be in the club. You don't want to be nowhere Jesus ain't. Well, see, I'm going to soul win. Whatever.